Hello, it is Max from aimtogame.com bringing you a Bucket for Dummies tutorial part 2. In this part 2 I'll be showing you how to install some basic plugins which are Essentials and Permissions X. Um, in this tutorial I'll show you how to configure them, how to install them, and any other side bits and pieces of advice that I can show you on how to fix problems. So, first things first, from tutorial part 1, if you haven't watched it, um, please go back and watch it because it shows you how to set up the basic server if you don't know how to do that. If not, well then enjoy this tutorial and I uh, hope you guys enjoy. So, first part, um, in a bucket server you have a folder called plugins and in that folder at the moment is blank, that's because we have not installed anything yet. So, the first link you're going to need is bucket.org. And this is a site where basically you can get all the latest craft bucket builds and all the latest plugins. Uh, when you're picking plugins, you've got to be careful that they are um, finished builds, proper builds that are done by people who know what they're doing. If you get a really bad plugin, it may leak RAM, causing your server to crash or error messages. So make sure you always read the descriptions of the plugins and make sure you read the comments. So, first plugin I'm going to be looking at is Permissions X and essentials. So for essentials we're just going to do the core download really quickly. There we go. Uh, another thing while I'm waiting for that to download is that when you're downloading plugins always try and get them off bucket dev as well. So dev build bleeding edges, uh, there should be a dev link, so there we go. So you can look for the latest builds and whatnot here as well as you can see. There. Right, once you've done that just drag the folder, uh, the WinRAR folder, into your bucket server. One thing that I forgot to mention in part one is that you will need a program called WinRAR. Um, w i n r a r is down here. It's a uh, program that enables you to unzip zipped folders. It's uh, really handy, and you're definitely going to need it if you're going to be running a bucket server. Um, type that in on Google to find it. So the next thing I'm also going to be doing is going to bucket dev for our permissions X, finding the latest download here, downloading permissions X, and dumping it into here as well. So next thing we're going to do is I'm actually think you can run the server and it'll extract these, but I'm not going to do that because there are a couple of files I don't actually need and don't want in this part of the server. So, strict files here. I'll show you how to set up these files and make sure that you have a running server. Um, this won't include chat formatting or anything like that. This is just going to be so you can run your own server um, with the basics. So first I'm going to get rid of is modifier world, chat, ma uh, chat manager, and essentials. Uh, we'll leave essentials chat in there. I suppose we may as well make it look a bit nicer. So chat manager, modifier world, and actually get rid of essentials chat, whatever. So you are left with also essentials protect, I do not want in the server. So permissions X, essentials spawn, and essentials is what you're going to be left with. Right. First of all, you, once you've dumped them into your folders, you're going to run the server for the first time, and it's going to generate all these files. If everything's done correctly, it'll come up with essentials running, you know, there's no warning error messages, no big load of crap there, and you're going to get all these files here. Plugin metrics, just leave that, I'm not sure what it does, it's like a bridge plugin I suppose. So, first of all, inside of essentials, you're going to see a config file, upgrades done and worth. When you're editing a plugin, always go for the config file, yet again, open it with notepad++. If you don't open it with Notepad++, it's going to look like a big pile of crap. So it formats it out, it looks nice, and so you can read it. So when you're configuring a plugin, the first thing you need to do is read. Um, all the instructions and everything are actually usually in the plugin or in the bucket dev link. Um, so the first thing you'll be looking at is um, just reading everything that it says here, how everything's formatted basically says, and we get onto our first bit of configuration. So. Operators color C. Go to Google, type in um, Minecraft color codes. I'll have a link for that in the description. Basically, uh, you type in a color code, so and C is like a um, sort of a ready sort of a color. You can choose between whatever color you want to. I like having no color for operators because they're hidden, it helps. Nicknames, if you decide to change your in game name and have that next to it, I'll just get rid of that because it looks better. 
So yeah, it's just about going through and reading. It's pretty self-explanatory. Everything has a big description of how everything works. Teleport cooldowns, healing cooldowns. You just change this to anything you want. Um, over in commands, player. So this is only this is basically the permissions plugin. But if you don't have the permissions plugin, so this is got its inbuilt permissions. It's not very good, and I wouldn't use it. Just ignore this part. Kits, so forward slash kit tools, kit D tools, you get all these cool stuff. Um, if you want, let's say, color signs to be enabled, you just remove that. Cell signs, you just, yeah, so color signs are now working if I did that. Just remove anything, heal signs, game mode signs, enchanting signs, it's cool stuff like that, and that'll all work. Uh, if you set up the signs. Backup, how often it backs up. Um, remove God and disconnect, true or false, it's very self-explanatory. You know, how long before you turn AFK, which is away from the keyboard, and you know how long afterwards when you turn AFK do you get kicked from the server. Uh, death messages, whether you die, does it say you know you got killed or whatever it is. Um, I usually have this disabled because it's just spam and it's annoying. Um, what else is there? Essentials economy, I don't really use that. So this is if you had Essentials chat, how would you format it? Um, this is Essentials protect stuff, I deleted that so there's no need for that for me. But basically you can turn off anything in your server you don't want. Right, spawn new players. So when a new player joins, what do you want it to look like? Basically, uh, I can't remember what color D is off the top of my head. I like B personally. Um, B looks very nice. It's like a light aqua blue. So this can come as aqua blue. It says welcome, and then it would say spares for life to the server. Spawn point newbies. So there's two different spawn points you can set. Forward slash set spawn means that if anyone dies, they go to that spawn point. If anyone does forward slash spawn, they go to that spawn point. Uh, there's also another one for uh, forward slash set spawn space newbies, which means any new players that join the server, you can set somewhere else so that they can go through a tutorial. Um, yeah, so that's about it really for um, essentials. It's pretty easy. It's just reading and checking everything's right. Once that's all done, you're all ready to roll. Right, the next thing I've got here is permissions X. Now, this can be a bit of a problem for a lot of people because it is a more complicated side of Minecraft. Um, I'm going to set up a basic permissions so that you guys can see how it works and how to set up different classes. So first thing first, what does this all mean here? So they've basically made it so that when you join the game, you join a class called default. The reason why you instantly join it is because default equals true. That means when you join the game, you're set in the default class, not in some non-existent. If you didn't want them to, if you want people to join your server and have no, no permissions or anything at all, you'd set that to false. So, I'll grab a permissions backup because this is going to take too much time if I write up my own one. This is just from my Hunger Games server really quickly. Right, so, what does this all mean? I'm going to go through this step by step to show you exactly what each piece of this means. So, groups, tribute. This is the name of the group they join. Default equals true, which means anyone who joins a server will instantly go to this group here. So only have one group default true. Information. So information is their prefix, so what's going to come before their name. So in this case it's going to say tribute and then their name. And this is going to be in green. Whether they can build. False means that obviously they can't build blocks, they can't touch blocks, they can't do anything with blocks. Now this comes a bit of where what permissions does is their permissions nodes. A node basically means whether they can or can't do something. So if the node here says essentials dot, um, dot help means they can do forward slash help. This means they can do that. Message of the day forward slash MOTD means they can do that. Same with rules. Now there are two different types of permissions to node. One's a negative one and this one's a positive one. Positive says yes, negative says no. To make a negative one, all I'd have to do is put this little note here, like so. Negative symbol, no spaces there, just a space there, like that. This means they can no longer do that command. For instance, this would be handy, oopsies, insert. This would be handy if I did not want, let's say, if for some reason, builders from doing essentials.help, forward slash help, I do negative essentials.help. So now builders can no, no, no longer do this. Now. Before I get too ahead of myself, the reason why builders can do this 
essentials.help already without having the essentials.help and their permissions is an inheritance. An inheritance means is that whatever rank is listed in the inheritance, this rank here, builder, gains their commands. So instead of having essentials.help, message of the day and rules all under builder, and after a while it can be a big mess and it can be confusing, you just have it inheriting from different groups. So this means that all of these here, all of these permissions nodes saying yes or no, yes or no, yes or no, all can go under this here from the inheritance. Um, if you want to add a group, um, it's pretty easy. You just copy the format like so. I just want to add a group real quick. Let's say I want to call this group, um, I'll just call it table. I don't know why. That's the first thing that comes into my head. Table. And I want it to inherit from builder. But I don't want to write out builder.game, you know, essentials.game or essentials.fly. So what I would do is underneath the uh, build, we're just going to see true, enter. We're going to make it inherit from builder. I'm going to remove this permission. No. So now, table and builder have exactly the same permissions. They can do exactly the same until I add another permissions node to the bottom here. Right, I'm just going to close this. Wait a second. Close all of this. For permissions, that is about all you need to know. Um, and essentials, they're very easy to set up and do. Um, let's just quickly run this. Just check if this. We're just going to go full slash reload. There's probably going to be some sort of error message. Oh no, there we go. So this means a successful reload, and there are no error messages coming through. Alright, I'm Max from Aim to Game. Um, this is part two for bucket bucket for dummies. Um, Part 3 is going to show some basic area messages and how to fix them.